today I'm going to show you how you can create this in seven minutes or less. Timestamps will be in the description if you would like to check that out. All right, so the first thing that you're gonna need to do is click the link in the description. And it should take you to here. And you're just gonna need to click download and wait for that to download. Once it's downloaded, you can find it in your folders and unzip it with something like WinZip. And so you're just going to want to extract them all, open it up and click on the TTF file and you're gonna wanna install it. I already have it installed, so I'm not gonna do it, but just press the install button and it'll put it on. The next thing that you're gonna wanna do is click on the other link in the description and it's gonna give you the photo that I'm using. And you're just gonna press the um, download and you're probably gonna want it as large. Just download as large and then do download selected. All right, now that my photo is downloaded and I have the text installed that I'm gonna use, I'm gonna go get my photo and drag it in here. Now, if you're wanting this to be a full screen only, you will want it as 1920 by 1080. The first thing you're gonna need to do is make this black and white and boost the contrast a lot. So the easiest way of doing this, I think, is going to filter, um, Nike software, Silver FX Pro. Click on this, and then in here, you should see an overexposed. You could also go with this, that works too. I'm gonna go ahead and use the high structure instead. And what you're gonna wanna do is you're just gonna press Control S and save that somewhere you can find it. And you can just save it as a PSD. Now close that out and open your photo again. Okay, so now what you are going to want to do is you're going to want to go to your text tool and click and just write whatever you want. Now you are going to want to change your font to the desired font, or if you're using the font I'm using, it'd be all the way at the bottom. All right, so there is two versions of this font. There's the normal. If you type it in caps, then it will be just the outline. Now for this, we want the whole thing, not just the outline. Now what you're gonna to want to do is select colors. Now I have a, another link in the description with a color palette, and you're just gonna to want to download that color palette and drop it in here. I'm going to make my text be this nice brightish green. I'm gonna set it at 300. Now we're gonna go to blending options. So you're gonna right click on your text and go to blending options. Then you're going to go, and the first thing that we are going to do is inner shadow. So right here, turn off global lighting and set that to 90. The next thing we wanna do is set that to opacity to 100% and change the blend mode to normal. So we also want to change the size to zero, completely zero. Then we're just gonna set the distance to about 15 and we are gonna make that the dark green. So now that that's done, we're going to add a stroke. So we're just gonna go here and make a stroke. We're gonna make it about five or six pixels. And we want that on the outside, normal blend mode, 100% opacity. And we're gonna make that the nice light blue that we have. Now, if you are not using the same photo or the same font, obviously all of these numbers that I am using probably are gonna be completely different for you. So choose whatever you think looks best, but if you're following along exactly with this tutorial, then I highly recommend you use the exact settings that I use. So the next thing that we are going to do is we're gonna put a outer glow on and we're going to want to change the opacity to 100% and the blend mode to normal. And then we are under elements, we're gonna to wanna to change the technique to precise and change the spread to 100%. Now we can change the size and the color. So the color we're gonna make into the red, like a maroon, and we're gonna make this probably around 20 that is completely done now so we shouldn't we don't need the colors anymore so we can actually just get rid of that and we are going to want to make this into a smart object so how you do that is you're going to get your text layer right click and go to convert to smart object now the reason we want to convert this to a smart object is because we're about to add a um like a depth map and if we add that and don't convert to a smart layer we won't be able to change the text again However, if we do have a smart object, then we can just click on it and go and edit this text whenever we want. Now that we've converted it to a smart object, we're gonna go up and we're going to go to filter, distort, displace. Now I'm gonna set mine to about five. Um, 
but you know play around with it figure out how it needs to be but definitely do both of these numbers the same then you're gonna press ok and you're gonna go find that picture that we saved earlier and we're gonna open that now as you can see it looks really weird but we're not done yet we're not done yet okay so now what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to right click on your layer over here and go to blending options now there are several ways you can do this most people would just do like go to oh go to like lighten or um like vivid light or just something and make it to where it goes over it however we have already set the colors exactly how we want so we don't want it changing our colors we just want it to make it look like it's actually on the brick what we're going to do is we're going to go like this and there are two sliders right here we do not want to use the top one we want to use the middle one okay and we're just gonna we're just gonna grab them and kind of put them until we think that they look kind of like you know weathered on brick and we can split these two slider pieces by holding down alt on your keyboard and left clicking and now we these are separated and it will make the lines much less harsh so I'm just going to do this with both of these just to, so that it doesn't look super harsh. We're not going to change any of these settings. We're just going to press OK. And that is it. It is completely done. And now we can just get this and we can move it around to wherever we want it to be. And we are done. Now that it's done, we can save it. Just press Control S. Go to wherever you want to save it and save it. I highly recommend saving this as a Photoshop PSD. You can always come back and change it later. And again, that's why we want it to be a smart object because then we can come back, we could edit this text and as you can see, it changed it. So that's super handy. And then you're gonna wanna press Control Shift S and save it as a JPEG. And there you go, it's done and it's beautiful and you can go show this off, put it as your background, do whatever you want with it. And that was creating a graffiti wall in seven minutes or less. If this was helpful and you learned anything from it, please make sure to like and subscribe.